Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 257. Fun is like life insurance. The older you get, the more it costs. Ken Hubbard. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's episode is brought to you by Blackbox. Blackbox is a new platform and community that is all about financial freedom for filmmakers like you. If you join Blackbox, you will be transformed from being a worker to being a maker of your own content. And you'll be making steady passive income from the global market. Blackbox currently allows you to upload your stock footage once, get it to many global agencies, and then allows you to share that passive income stream with your collaborators. Whether you want to submit old footage that's been sitting around in your hard drives or create brand new content, Blackbox is for you. It's really quite revolutionary. With Blackbox, filmmakers can concentrate on making great content while Blackbox takes care of all the business BS. Just visit www.blackbox.global to find out more. Today's show is also sponsored by Studio Unknown. Studio Known is a crack team of audio post professionals known for quality sound on any indie budget. Whether you need a lush surround sound mix or a quick festival submission pass, Studio Known can help you with all of your post sound needs, from sound design and mix to Foley ADR and even a custom score. Contact Studio Known and mention the Indie Film Hustle podcast and you'll get 50% off one day of ADR or 10% off your complete post sound package. Just go to studiounknown.com. Now, guys, today on the show, we're going to talk about one of the most exciting topics in all of filmmaking, film and production equipment insurance. (laughs) But I wanted to have um, our guest today, Catherine Wong and Eileen Villarin from Athos Insurance to come on the show and talk about insurance, about equipment insurance when you're renting gear to workman's comp to actual yearly policies versus monthly policies or just per project policies. You know, when I did on the corner of Eagle and Desire, I actually used their services for the equipment and some other insurance that we needed um, for the shoot. And I wanted to kind of, you know, talk about it a little bit because it's something that no one talks about because it isn't the most exciting thing in the world to talk about. But when you don't have it, it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So as filmmakers and as entrepreneurs, you need to protect yourself and, and and understand the world of insurance, especially in the indie world. And it's not as expensive as you might think. Now, full disclosure, I am not getting paid a single cent, nor was I given any special deals at Athos for them uh, having them on the show. I actually reached out to them and I wanted to put them on the show because I think it's something that, that no one talks about. There's not many podcast episodes dedicated to production insurance and equipment insurance. So I wanted to have Kat and... I lean on to kind of demystify what uh, insurance is and what we can do to make sure we're covered and protected when making our independent films, even on a micro budget. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Catherine Wong and Eileen Villarin from Athos Insurance. I'd like to welcome to the show Catherine Wong and Eileen Villarin from Athos Insurance Services. Thank you so much for jumping on, guys. Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's been it, we've been trying to do this for a while, <laughs> but we've, we're finally we're finally here, and it is a you know I wanted to have you guys on because you know insurance as I was telling you earlier not the sexiest part of the whole filmmaking process, but <laughs> if you don't have it, it becomes one of the most nightmare most nightmares that you could deal with is not yes. having proper insurance and not for understanding sure. insurance and an understanding the power of it, what to do, what to get, what not to get uh, on low budgets, on big budgets, all sorts of things, especially on indie, on, on an indie world. I thought it was very mm-hmm. important to have you guys on to kind of demystify uh, production insurance and insurance in general uh, for the indie film tribe. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, sure. happy to be here. So how did you guys get into the wacky world of insurance? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, I'll try to make it brief, but I basically got into it by mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how a lot of us get into it is. uh, So I basically um, when I was at UCLA, I, um, you know, I worked for an insurance firm um, while I was going to college and I got into it. I learned that people they said it was a very lucrative industry 
And I, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. And, um, you know, uh, all of my friends were going to business school. And I said, you know what, I you know I have that degree, but I'm going to give insurance a try. Mm-hmm. And I can always do that later if I don't want to. And then I tried to sell insurance and it was really tough. Um, but I said, you know, I'm going to try to do something that's, that's more niche. So I got into sports insurance, believe it or not, like skate park insurance. Nice. <laughs> and then, um, and then from that, I kind of just walked into more of the entertainment stuff, you know, like cameras, production gear through a really unique opportunity at one of the companies that I started at. And then from there, that's when I started to do gear rentals, insurance and production equipment. And yeah, and it was just like a really wonderful opportunity. And that's how I got into production insurance. And once you do a niche, it's like it's a really wonderful you know, great thing because people are then looking for you. So right. it didn't matter that, you know, I looked like a child. <laughs> so that's why it was really cool because that was why it was really hard to sell insurance because I look so young. Um, so, but yeah, that it's been really great for me. I'm very fortunate. Me and my family, we've, you know, definitely benefited from this career of mine. So, you know, we love doing it and I love doing it. Yeah. So uh, I used to be the youngest one in the room too. So enjoy it while you have it. <laughs> <laughs> one day I just yeah. turned around. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not the youngest one in the room anymore. Damn. Dang, uh, it. <laughs> dang it. What's going on? So you mean to tell me you didn't have like posters of like E&O policies up on your wall as a teenager? Oh, oh <laughs> no. Nobody does. No one wants to get and if they do, the reality. and if they do, they're, they're psychotic and, and we'll probably kill someone at one point. Or another. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah. I mean, so for me, I, I was actually in law school. So I had this, you know, um, this feature that I thought I was going to have and, and practicing law. And it wasn't what I expected. And so I took a little break mm-hmm. and um, my sister was like, oh, you should try insurance. I heard it's a really good, um, you know, a, a really good path to go into. So I did. And I was for a while selling like employee benefits, which is honestly like I, I love my coworkers at the time, but it was just not what I wanted to do. It was a little boring. I just was not excited about it. And I really contemplated going back to school. And then suddenly, um, you know, there was this opening in my company for, um, you know, their entertainment division. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, let me just try to get into that and see if I like a different kind of insurance. And so I did. And it was it was funny because it was actually the uh, exact same program that Kat had developed. We didn't know each other at the time, but she Mm -hmm. had developed this program that basically insured production equipment. And kind of revitalize that whole system. And so people kept talking to me about Kat, Kat this, Kat Wong. Like, (laughs) you guys, you know, you remind me of of Kat Wong. And I was just like, who is this Kat girl? Like, she's not here anymore. Like, this is my show now. (laughs) And so it was pretty funny. And then so I ended up, you know, kind of inheriting that program and, you know, grew it back to its glory days. Um, And then eventually Kat and I met and I mean, honestly, it it was such a light bulb moment. And at the Mm -hmm. time, I just wasn't happy with the company that I was working with. Mm -hmm. But I knew that this was an exciting type of insurance that I was starting to become really passionate about. I love meeting the people that were in the industry. And I just grew a passion for it. And then she was like, hey, you know, I think you're doing really well. I'm starting this new company. Would you join me? And I was like, yes, let's do it. And <laughs> and it's honestly crazy, been a crazy. match made in heaven ever since. Yes. And I'm so thankful for her. I'm so thankful for Athos for giving me this opportunity. And we've just been able to grow this company together. And and yeah, every day is, is, an, is an adventure and, and we yes. enjoy it. So. And so I would not be here without Eileen. She's my work wife. <laughs> so, so basically you two crazy kids said, hey, we have a dream. And we're going to make insurance for filmmakers. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, it's a very hard, um, you know, insurance is hard, I have to say. <laughs> oh, it's God. very complicated. Oh, and yes. So, you know, especially, you know, if, if people are coming to try to get protection for themselves, mm-hmm. it's hard when you don't even understand what it's saying, right? So mm-hmm. we're trying to kind of, you know, simplify things or trying to make sure that when they have insurance requirements that people are giving them, that we're reading it and telling them, 
you know, verbatim, this is what like you need. Mm -hmm. And then if they're like, well, I don't have the money for it. We're going to be like, okay, well, if you don't want to pay for it, this is what you're (laughs) risking. Okay. So are you ready for that? Yeah. I look, I I look, I had, I had that conversation with you in January. Yeah. (laughs) uh, We were going out to go shoot on the corner of Vigo and Desire. And we had a lot of gear moving over to, to Park City to shoot the movie. And that was the one time I'm like, you know, I know we have because honestly, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have had insurance because I, it, <laughs> because Athos was just so simple. And we'll get into more about Athos later. Um, but mm-hmm. it was it was a process, and we had the conversations on the phone. We're like, "Well, I want this," and you're like, "Well, this is what you need." I'm like, "Well, I don't, I don't want that. That's a little too much money." <laughs> and you're like, "Well, then you're risking this." I'm like, "I'll risk it," and then yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and you just but you yeah. make educated decisions. But before right. we get into that, what kind of insurance do filmmakers generally need for a, a standard? production? Uh, that's a good question. So I think the standard policies that typ- people typically start with would be a general liability policy. Mm-hmm. And that um, would cover uh, claims against third parties. So people that are not associated with your production, but maybe somehow y- you're, you know, you're found liable for their injuries. So mm-hmm. an example would be, let's say you're shooting outside in a park somewhere and there's somebody with a little kid and they tripped and fell on like a cord that you had there and they sued you for those injuries that's what a general liability policy would um Mm -hmm. defend you um yeah and most people you know they they assume like oh i have liability and Mm -hmm. they think that means you're covered for everything and that's where you have to be really careful because liability doesn't cover your cast for injuries or your right. crew for injuries, that's all covered by work comp. Right. And that's the big one, you know, where people don't want to pay for that we'll, one. We'll get into I have a whole whole series of questions about work comp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but generally speaking, so general liability is, is what uh, a film production. So if I'm an indie filmmaker, I've got a $50,000 budget film. I'm going mm-hmm. out there. I'm like, I just want some, prote- I want some protection. Uh, general yeah. liability is, is the starting point. The right, starting point, exactly. yeah, and then the, the gear. Yeah, we'll get into and all so, that stuff, yeah, afterwards. Sure, okay. Yeah. And, then, mm-hmm. and then what's the difference between short-term and annual insurance? Yeah, so short-term insurance is usually just defined as one project. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you know, just one project. So you schedule that one feature or, you know, one project, and the annual is multiple projects. So, so more you know, like a production one com- year. So like more mm-hmm. for like a production company that's doing yes. multiple things? Yeah, multiple. Mm-hmm. And it's that's a right. year long, you know, policy and you have multiple things that you can cover under that. And then mm-hmm. so basically uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're planning to do a lot of commercials or music videos or sh- a lot of short films that you want coverage on, if you can afford it, an annual makes more sense because in the yeah. long run, mm-hmm. it's much more affordable than getting a bunch of short terms. Yeah, right, and that's, that's correct. Right. And we usually work with our clients because even if you have, let's say, two or three that you know you're going to have, mm-hmm. it may not make sense for you to get an annual one because mm-hmm. of that upfront cost. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a barrier to entry, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be able to afford that cost. Um, and some people don't know if they're going to have it or not, you know, if they're going to actually have those, you know, jobs. four or five jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, workman's comp. <laughs> the lovely world of workman's comp. Um, please explain what that is. Um, well, that really covers injuries to your cast and crew. Mm-hmm. Um, so production related injuries, I should say. So not just any <laughs> kind, but <laughs> right. so basically if there's, if they slipped and fell in your shoot and now they have to go to the emergency room or they have <laughs> bills, you know, the ambulance bill, things like that. Um, that's what that would cover. So anytime people say, Hey, I, I want, you know, I have general liability that covers my, my cast and crew and all the actors and all the, you know, the people that I'm hiring and we're like, no, it doesn't actually. And so it's a very different kind of coverage than liability. If you want to think about it, liability is for everybody else that's not related to your production. And then work comp is essentially covering injuries to the people that you're actually bringing on to your project. And that is something that uh, is something you should definitely get. It's a, but it's, again, a little bit more expensive and it's something a lot of filmmakers uh, and productions don't get, correct? Exactly. Yeah. It, I mean, it's definitely um, something that most people should get. And I say most because there are some you know exceptions that we've seen. Um, in terms of California, though, workers' comp is a statutory requirement, mm-hmm. which means that if you go to like a permit house, 
uh, permit office and, and, you know, you're trying to get permits to shoot at maybe like a public beach, they typically will require it. Um, it. You've seen it get waived in very, I mean, it's not very common that they will waive it. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on, depending on the state that you're in or in the country you're in for that matter. Um, right. what their requirements are for workman's comp. Well, I, I'll tell you, I mean, I was a PA when I was first starting out and I got rear-ended uh, by a car while I was delivering film to the lab and I mm-hmm. was, I was covered. I mean, my, my, That's good. I yeah. was, I yeah. was covered. My, insur- my insurance was covered. Everything was taken care of because the production I had on had workman's comp. If and not, you're very lucky. I was yeah, extremely lucky because I was, that was pretty bad back then. <laughs> so workman's yeah. comp is definitely something uh, you should definitely look into. Now, what kind of insurance should you get for equipment? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, and I think that's a really good question because there's, you know, um, you're going to be renting a lot of equipment, right, when you're doing a shoot. So there's the gear that you're going to rent from the production rental houses. So you want to make sure you're covering all of that gear. Mm -hmm. And then also if you're hiring DPs, You want to make sure even though they have coverage for their own gear, Mm -hmm. you're technically hiring these DPs as well. Mm -hmm. So you also want to make sure you're covering the value of the DPs equipment as well in the rented equipment. So that's usually what we also include in the rented equipment coverage. Mm -hmm. Now, how do film insurance deductibles work? Um, okay, so it depends on what kind of policy we're talking about. To simplify, I guess we can talk about the equipment. Let's do equipment um, and then we'll do uh, general liability. Sure. Okay. So um, for equipment, essentially a deductible is what you're responsible for um, if a claim happens. So let's say you know you have a ten thousand uh, dollar piece of gear that you um, rented from a rental house, mm-hmm. and let's say your deductible, for simplicity's sake, is a thousand dollars. Now, when you go through the claims process, there's an adjuster. They'll kind of figure out, hey, how much is this gear worth? And through that whole process, they they um, Let's say they find out, okay, it is worth $10,000. So the deductible would be deducted from the final settlement amount. So let's say it's $10,000 minus the $1,000 deductible. The claim check payment to you will be $9,000. And then you have to pay the claim. No, so the claim oh. amount, mm-hmm. so the insurance carrier will then cut you a check for 9000 because it's 10000 minus the $1,000 sure. deductible. Got yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And same, same situation for general liability if, if there's a, a claim. They're going to deduct whatever that is, whatever the deductible is. And yeah, then and then depending expensive. on the deductible, it could be cheaper or more expensive, the policy. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Yeah. And some uh, general liability policies actually don't have deductibles. Mm-hmm. And so those are those tend to be like the richer type of plan. So that does exist where there's a policy and there's no out of pocket cost to you. So those policies do exist. Now, I'm sure in your day, I know it's impossible to believe, but. Have there been false claims ever? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots. You mean to tell me that there are filmmakers out there who will lie to get money from an insurance company? So oh, yeah. Bad. For sure. So, There's a lot of fraud that happens. So tell me, so tell me <laughs> what you guys – don't give away, obviously, the, 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 the secret sauce, but <laughs> what do you guys do and how can you smell when something is well, – because, I mean, obviously, look, I'm, I'm driving – let's say I'll use my, my movie as an example. We're driving to Utah. We park on a, at a gas station. We go inside to get something. When we come out, the window's busted and our camera's gone. And let's mm-hmm. say we had a, a an eighty thousand dollar Alexa sitting back there. Oh you know? man! You know, like it, and it, you know, they just they knew exactly what it was, and they grab it and they take off. Right. That could yeah. be shady, or that mm-hmm. could be real. How do you know the difference, and how 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 does that work? Yeah, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. So we actually have an amazing claims team mm-hmm. um, on the insurance carrier side. Mm-hmm. They have really good i mean they can smell it they will ask all sorts of questions so like even in your example right there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you said you went to a gas station right sure. they'll get the footage from no, no. the gas station oh, okay right okay to verify what just happened how that happened was there really a break you know break mm-hmm, in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know just to verify sure. at the time that someone actually broke in so just to kind of you know verify the location in the time that mm-hmm. it actually existed now, if all of a sudden there is nothing to justify that, then they kind of need to hire 
um, what we call a special investigations unit, mm-hmm. you know, especially, so on a pro- a, especially on something like that. It's 80,000. Yeah, it's not a $5,000 claim, so. not a $2,000 claim. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Right. So, you know, and we at Athos, we have our own investigative team here. <laughs> um, so we, we yeah. do a lot on our end as well. We have our own secret, um, sauce that yeah. we won't you, talk you, about. You, you, um, <laughs> you, you have a way to see if it passes the smell test. Right. Yeah. Yes. On the front end now. So on, on the front, the front b- before you bring in the heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and I have to say that the amount of fraud has, es- I mean, it has gone up yeah, so it's much. Crazy. It's, it's sad. Really? Now, <laughs> it's is really it, sad. now, if someone's caught doing that, what happens? I mean, they can get in a lot of trouble. I mean, yeah. insurance fraud is a very real thing. They can get prosecuted. Um, we've yeah. had people go to jail for it. Yeah, we and... actually have a connection with the FBI. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we've turned. Lots oh, it of goes. It goes to, to the. It goes to the FBI. It doesn't go to like yes, the local sheriff. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah wow. they, won't, they can't take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, everyone yeah. listening, it's some serious stuff. It's bad. <laughs> it's some serious stuff. It's nothing to play around with. Like, hey, this will be cool. We'll just tell yeah. them that it got stolen. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a good and thing. And honestly, sometimes it's like common sense. Like people are can be kind of sloppy when they're committing fraud. I no. Think. Like one, one you example, mean criminals are sloppy? <laughs> no. <laughs> like one example that happened recently was this guy was like, oh, I was shooting over a bridge and the camera my fell camera fell into the bridge and into the water below and I can't retrieve it. Now let's file a claim. So we had an investigator check, you know, okay, well, where's this bridge? Like, where's this creek below? Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> come to find out through the investigation that you know it was a very kind of hot day and so the the um the gear the camera that fell in the water it probably fell in like two inches of water because it was the creek was kind of drying up at that time of year and so they're like you mean to tell me it was like swallowed up by this two you know feet of water and he was like yeah i never it, it wasn't there and so, you know, things like that where it's like, okay, I think if your camera fell in there, you could have retrieved it. You could have shown us, hey, look at this damaged yeah. camera. And so things like that where it's like, oh, I, I, this f- smells a little fishy. So yeah. we do get a lot of those. My yeah. God, yeah. that's that's <laughs> ridiculous. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you get, I'm sure you have hundreds of stories like that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, lots. Okay, we Be- can go on. Because, because <laughs> I, you know, I, I know my people and filmmakers sometimes. <laughs> I've I've met I've met many <laughs> I've met yeah. many. Um, now uh, the one the one insurance that's always a little bit it kind of catches you by off guard, especially filmmakers, is E and O insurance or Aero, Era and Emissions insurance. Mm-hmm. Can you please demystify what that is and the necessity of it if you're planning to sell your movie to a traditional distributor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a really good question. So usually for errors and omissions, it's something that you're going to have to get if your film gets picked up by a distributor. So, um, so technically, you don't really need it until you're, you know, you're getting picked up. So mm-hmm. um, what that's going to cover is, you know, the content of the film. So traditionally, you would have, you know, a clearance attorney kind of review all the stuff that you've put into the film, you know, did, did the Coca-Cola can get clear? Did you get the licensing? Did you, you know, did you get permissions to use all those things Mm -hmm. so that you don't get, you know, hit with a lawsuit after you release it, you know, publicly. So that's really what, um, you know, that insurance is there for. And so that's what you really need. And all the the things in your contract are going to lay out the terms of that insurance. Mm -hmm. So when we get, you know, when people ask us for E&O insurance, we review those contracts really, really thoroughly to make sure it meets all the demands of the distribution agreement. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we help set it up for our clients. And, and, and again, it's, it, it it all depends because I know a lot of people freak out about things in the movies like, Oh my God, there's a Coke can on the, on the counter. I'm like, Mm -hmm. as long as the Coke can has not killed somebody, um, or you're doing something erratic with that Coke can, arguably it's okay to have it in there. But it depends on the scene. It, it's, it's like a gray area. And this is from my experience over 20 years of doing this. And I've had this conversation many times with, with the NO people and, and, and with distributors. You know, if someone's wearing a t shirt, I'm like, well, if there's a logo on that t shirt, is it, is it cleared? Is it not cleared? Mm-hmm. Do you, you know, are we going to have to go in with VFX and clean it out? 
you know, things like that. Um, yeah. It's a it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. But if you don't get you know insurance, um, and, and by the way, a lot of times too, I hear that, uh, and it happened to me that the distributor will pay for it. That they'll deal with the you know insurance if they want the movie. It was like one of our movies that we did. That's exactly what they did because we mm-hmm. it was a very low budget movie. And they're like, oh, we'll take yeah. care of the you know insurance. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, but a lot of times it's uh, if you don't go out with like let's say you self distribute a movie with a lot of filmmakers listening right now are self distributing their their shows or their their independent movies or things like that. <clears throat> if they don't have you know insurance, you know insurance is just there basically to protect them from a lawsuit from Coca Cola or from mm-hmm. Apple because you use an iPhone on their yeah you know correct is that basically what it's there for? Yes, yeah, yeah that's correct. But I I think also even the insurance carriers won't even give that policy unless there's also been like a clearance attorney that's also reviewed all the content too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as long as that's all happened, then yeah, that that's really what needs to happen. This is the fun stuff of filmmaking. I'm telling you, this is, this yeah, is the exciting yeah. stuff. <laughs> and that's a funny thing is that filmmakers will go, they'll spend $500,000 on their movie, a million dollars on their movie. And if I've, I've seen it happen that they like, what is E&O insurance? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Someone <laughs> gave you a million dollars and you guys don't know what you know insurance is. I know. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's the sad part. And we're always the last part. Right. And they always rush us at the very end because they're the, it's like the one part they don't want to think about or the one part they didn't, you know, want to yeah. budget for, I guess. And oh, so, yeah. You know, and, and that's fine. You know, we're used to it now. But I think it's it's also very important that they, they also spend – the time and respect the process of, you know, the insurance part, because we're also equally important. <laughs> you know, you're talking to a, you're talking to a post guy. Are you kidding me? They all, <laughs> like you're behind me and they run out of money with me, let alone for you know, insurance. Are you kidding? They're telling me yeah. they're like, look, we have no money for color or editorial. I'm like, well, you guys are just dumb. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Look, yeah. the girls down the block you're going to talk to in about six months are really going to give you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think for us, it really starts with education. I mean, we work with a lot of film students. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I'm not sure. I've never been to film school, so I don't know but how much um, focus they actually none. give on in, in terms of insurance none. and educating students. None. And so, yeah, we've heard none, honestly. Yeah. So I think every school is a little different, but the, at least the students that we work with they're just like what is this you mean what do you mean it costs this much i only have fifty dollars for insurance and we're like fifty dollars what are you what are you covering a pen (laughs) exactly we're like oh no you're gonna need more than that so even just help with budgeting you know Mm -hmm. like to learn how much to budget for insurance i think that's like the type of education that i know we like to give to Mm -hmm. at least our clients Mm -hmm. um and most of the time they tend to be students so yeah (laughs) there is no information about it at schools there's no information because look at at the end of the day it's not i've said it a couple times in this in this interview it's not sexy it's not the fun stuff it's not you know you know what's also not fun like understanding how to construct a proper story like people don't mm-hmm. take the time to learn their craft they're like i just want the new gear i just want this that's because that's sexy i want it's, the, more fun. it's yeah. much more fun to talk about camera lenses and cameras as opposed to right. oh i gotta sit down and talk about story structure and character arc oh god i just want to go have some fun and let alone right. insurance so there's yep. just not, none of that information out there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview with you guys. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully we can help with that. Yeah. yeah. Now, and, and what should you look for when hiring an insurance broker? Oh, that's, that's a, a good really one. good question. <laughs> um, I mean, I definitely think it's great to um, call a bunch of different brokers mm-hmm. um, and, you know, give them these scenarios that you're concerned with. Like, for example, if you're a camera operator and you do a lot of underwater filming, um, definitely ask those questions. Like, is this policy that I'm going to get, is it going to cover if I'm on a boat? Is it going to cover the gear if I accidentally you know, damage it um, Mm -hmm. while it's being, you know, it's filming underwater. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask the scenarios that matter to you, I would say. And then, you know, you can kind of gauge a good broker. They'll be either, you know, maybe they're annoyed of all the different questions that you're asking. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, 
it's our job as brokers to make you feel comfortable with the product that you're purchasing. So Kat and I have sat there for even just the other day. I was on the phone for like over half an hour going through different scenarios with this person. And, you know, and I think um, whenever you're looking for a broker, you want to make sure that one, they understand your business, um, exactly what it is that you do, whether you do weddings or movies or commercials, whatever it may be. And they're policy that they're offering you is actually going to cater to the type of work that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it it may take a phone call or two to do that. Um, But yeah, it's important to interview the brokers. Yeah, interview them. And then it's also good to see how fast their response time is. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you need something after you've already given them your business, you want to see how fast they respond to you. Um, because yeah, it's great when you give them their money, but what happens after when you actually need something? Yeah. The servicing aspect of it is we're very big on that. We have a a really good team here that really focuses on customer service. Um, we're always picking up the phones. We have chat that's on the website. If you don't want to call, um, you know, we really try to make our platforms accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's mobile friendly, our website, things like that, that just really help. You know, we know that you guys are on the go. We know that, you don't have a lot of time to deal with insurance. So whatever we can do to help the process is is only beneficial for everybody. So so you're telling yeah. me that if I'm going after car insurance, don't buy it from the strip mall for the guy <laughs> who's also selling uh, s- selling Mexican food and sushi and smoothies? <laughs> Probably. Whatever yeah. works for you. <laughs> you have to get a good feeling as well. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I'm going to say too, you know, Athos is, you know, we're also changing too, you mm-hmm. know, so you also have to find a broker who is also ethical and humble as well to, to be willing to, you know, talk to you and also say, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, no, you're right. And I'm going to, I'm going to fix that if there is a misunderstanding somewhere. So mm-hmm. yeah, you don't want a broker that goes, oh, I, 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 I knew that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you want a, you want a really good. Uh, it's almost like a good business partner. So I think very it, much with so. anybody, right? So mm-hmm. so that's kind of what we like to how we are here. You know, we're not going to always know the answers, but we'll try our best to get back to you. So that's how we we do things. Mm-hmm. The one thing I loved about working with you guys is that. And, and by the way, everyone listening, I did not get paid for this. These guys, the girls, did not pay us. This is not a sponsored thing. I just did it because I like what they're doing and how they're doing it. Uh, and I think it provides value to it, to everyone listening. So just want to make complete disclosure. Um, but the reason why I, I loved working with you guys is one, the ease because insurance, getting production insurance was such a, just a pain in the ass. You have to go through all these barbaric <laughs> systems and, and it was just like a paperwork and paperwork. It was just so hard and i'm like in today's world there has to be another option and then i was introduced to you guys by um brent from ShareGrid, uh Mm -hmm. that you guys also insure ShareGrid. and uh when i saw your website and i saw how easy it was i'm like next time i have a production i'm gonna use you guys and test it out and i did and i walked through it and i called you guys and you were very patient with me um so (laughs) thank you because i called back like at least 20 times i'm like it's not working catherine what's going on like you have to click the button alex that button right there. I don't understand. What is this? <laughs> so you were very, you were very, very kind with your time. Um, for not a huge policy, by the way, it wasn't like you were getting rich off this policy. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it was so easy to use. It was so streamlined. I got the insurance uh, certificates right away, and it was just done. And I sent them off to my uh, my equipment insurance. So I sent it off to my my crew who was bringing gear, and everyone was covered and. It was just wonderful. It was a really wonderful experience. So that's also one of the reasons why I want to shine a light on what you guys were doing. Oh, we're so glad. Yeah, that makes us happy to hear. And and yeah, and you know, we're always trying to improve our systems too. So you know, we 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 are a growing company, and we are also improving our website too. So that that website will get easier to click. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Now I have a couple more questions. Um, When do when should you add a specialty policy like for pyro or stunts, animals, weapons on set, things like that? Um, Yeah, that's a really good question. Again, Um, so I mean, anything that's really considered a stunt or a hazardous activity um, should really be disclosed on the application. So you know, for example, a stunt is like 
something that, you know, like a fight scene, for example, mm-hmm. that's considered a stunt. Or if mm-hmm. you have like a, a like a weapon that you're using, that's considered a stunt. Anytime you're going near in in the water, for example, that would be a stunt. So mm-hmm. anything that's not um, just like you're shooting somebody um, without anything. I like think a monologue. Be, yeah, like a monologue or a sit down interview or something like sure. that. I think you should definitely disclose on the application right away. Because mm-hmm. um, I think sometimes like people in the industry tend to think, oh, yo, no, that's not a, a stunt that we don't consider that a stunt. Well, well the insurance carrier is a little bit different. So right. they consider something stunts, whereas the mm-hmm. industry folks may not. So it's a yeah. fine line. Well, it's and also, yeah. I think, like foreign productions, too. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Anytime you're filming outside, outside the, the US. US. Now, mm-hmm. so basically, if and I know this happens all the time, is so if, if someone gets a policy, general liability policy, and they didn't happen to disclose that there was going to be a lion on set that day. Ooh, and yeah, then all of a sudden or even that's an extreme case but even they had a dog on set and that dog bites somebody yikes then you're going to be sorry you're not covered basically yeah yeah, yeah because that's you know you basically didn't um disclose, disclose it, it mm-hmm. so now if a dog not- happens to wander in it's not part of the production that's a different conversation i mean we could right, we can go into different. debates forever on this kind of stuff <laughs> oh, yeah that's different yeah, yeah that's different actually that happened not too long ago we had a client they did disclose it though that they had a dog um and then yeah that dog ended up biting one of i think it was like a crew member um but lucky for them they had work comp mm-hmm. under their payroll company so that's oh, another okay. another resource is sometimes when you um hire a payroll company an entertainment payroll company they Mm -hmm. can offer workers comp yep and so they got lucky so that person Mm -hmm. was covered so very cool now i'm gonna ask you what is the craziest claim you've ever received oh oh gosh craziest claim like you're like you can't you sat there going this can't be real okay so i have one (laughs) wow that was quick (laughs) sorry i have that was I'm quick. like the claims yeah, person. Yeah, the claims guru. So she is the. Um, the right. I don't even know if it's like the craziest, but the one that that's like the recent craziest, I uh-huh. think, was like a head scratcher. Was um, somebody had uh, like cut out a hole, like a it was like it's almost like a fist size hole in the door, and it was like a perfect circle. And they claim that somebody had like cut this perfect circle on the door and like reached in and opened the knob to their door and like stole all this gear. And so we had an investigator go in there and they're like, how do you, you know, is the hole even big enough for an arm? Like, can the arm go all the way in to reach the knob? And they like measured it and everything. It was just so bizarre. And there were some disagreements because some of the investigators were like, no, I have to like like tear my arm off or something to reach it, and they're like, "Oh, what if it's a, a guy that has a, a a very long arm?" Like, oh my God, it's an episode possible? of like I mean, it's the murder it she wrote. Really <laughs> yeah, it's, it it's was like monk. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I the man with one arm, the man with one arm did it. <laughs> yeah, and so you get these bizarre claims and you know a lot of people are involved in it because you know people have differences of opinion and you know do we <laughs> is this does this person have uh you know a, a history within the industry like are they you know do they, do they have a good reputation like all that stuff kind of comes into play mm-hmm. um whenever there's a, a claim like this where it can kind of go either way and obviously we're gonna we're always going to try as much as possible to believe our insureds, right? Like we're not out to be like, aha, you're a criminal. Like right. that's not our, 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 um, you know, our outlook. We're always going to assume, Hey, if you're going to file a claim, this is, you know, in good conscience and good faith, then we're going to cover it. Right. So innocent, I think innocent until proof guilty. Exactly. exactly. And we really yeah. do work that way. I mean, we're our, our, our clients, um, best advocates. Like we're not in the business of denying claims. I know people have kind of a mistrust when it comes to insurance, but can I always say, you know, if we don't pay claims, our, our business is done. Like right. we're, we're not oh, here yeah. to hit a lot <laughs> of claims. I think we paid like millions of dollars in claims. Oh, yes. And wow. so as much as possible, we're going to try to advocate for our clients and say, Hey, you know what? Yes. If there's an, an arm out in the world long enough to reach that knob, then you guys have to pay this claim. <laughs> I think God. for that one, we actually paid it. So. Yeah, really? Yeah. But it the, was, but it was, it, but it, it, it kind of, it kind of stunk a little bit. 
And you could smell oh, the yeah. smell. Yeah. The smell was, was a little a little rancid. It was a lot of gear and we had to make sure it wasn't staged, right? So you right. have to prove that that is really something that could have happened. Mm-hmm. So it was oh it was my. definitely a page turner. I mean, wow. you know, or not page turner, yeah. ear scratch. Yeah. <laughs> yes. For sure. Well, we I'm gonna, hate it. Uh, well, you know, I can't, I wouldn't have, but that's just me. <laughs> it just sounds fishy from the start. Oh, you you should have seen the picture. Yeah, you should see the picture. It was like really this funny. perfect. Like, what could have done? This? So in other words, someone actually sat there drew a circle made a perfect circle yeah cut it yeah. out and they're like this is going to be genius and apparently mm-hmm. it worked well you know what i always believe in karma so <laughs> yes it, karma yeah. karma will get you one way or another so you know if you do it now you'll get you'll get something down the line no question yeah, um, yeah. so i have a few questions i ask all of my guests um can you tell me which book had the biggest impact on your life or career oh um, I, I can go first. I think um, my well, my favorite author of all time is Paulo Coelho. So oh, I love Paulo. My, oh, yeah, I think for me, like a life changing book has to be The Alchemist. Oh. I mean, I go back to that book yes. every now and then, and I swear I I read something different that I haven't read. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a different journey every time you read it. So I always go mm-hmm. back to that book for awesome sure. Awesome book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, for me, it's got to be a girl boss. <laughs> Girl boss. <laughs> Which yes. actually I mean gave me. So typical. Little on the nose, I Catherine. Know. Little on the nose. I'm just saying. It. It's a little on the nose. I love it. And yeah. I actually saw the series on Netflix. That's the only reason I know about that book. Oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. saw the series on Netflix. It they only got one season, but I really enjoyed it. It was just this really great story about how you pulled yourself up from your bootstraps and, and yeah. built up a whole company. Um, all right. <laughs> so what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film industry or the insurance industry or in life? Oh, gosh. That's a good question. Well, we're getting real now. Oh, um, no. This is like Oprah style. <laughs> so get ready. I know. <laughs> I can tell. Oh, gosh. Are you, are you diverting this to us or to your listeners? No, know, to, right? to you guys. To you. Oh, <laughs> the longest to learn. Um. Mm. Ah, uh, that's a good oh question. Gosh, that's a hard one. The longest to learn. Um, I think. <laughs> I think for me, it's probably that like the world keeps turning. Like it just goes on. Like if you're having like a bad day at work, or mm-hmm. you know, there's something that you're just like. For me, like I get kind of obsessed with things, and so like if oh, I yeah. if someone comes to me and they're like, "Oh, I want this type of insurance," and it like does not exist. It really bothers me. And, <laughs> and so I know I'm kind of a nerd, but you know, those sol- solving problems and sometimes the answer is no, the answer is it's not insurable or, or the answer is it's just, we can't do it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And it kind of kills me a little bit, but I think at the end of the day, I have to remember that the world keeps turning and it just yeah. keeps going on and there's another yeah. day tomorrow. And that's yeah. tough sometimes. Yeah, mine is very similar to that, but it's basically like no matter how bad things get or how low things seem, it will always get better no matter how it is. It's just like we've yeah. gone through that at Athos here. It's mm-hmm. like there are moments here when Eileen and I would look at each other and go, how are we going to how are we going to make it, you know? Just we like do it. growing pains <laughs> and mm-hmm. You know, we've had just like times when it would just it would grow so fast that it would just seem like just like we couldn't handle handle it. it. Yeah. And, and you know, we would just just a miracle would walk in with the door with a great new employee or something. And then, you know, it's just some, oh, something always works out. And I, I always love that. Just, just to trust each other and just something will always pull us through. Mm-hmm. And I always awesome. Just always love that. And we can always trust each other as long as we all just keep working together and just keep plowing forward. <laughs> that is just always the biggest lesson is just to keep moving forward. For sure. Now, mm-hmm. this is the toughest question. What are your, what are the three favorite films of all time? Oh, gosh. Oh, I got it. Okay. This is so like I don't I'm so embarrassed. It's My okay. favorite film of all time mm-hmm. is still Titanic. <laughs> I love it. Because because your heart will go on, your heart will go on. Yeah, that's true. Um, Jurassic Park. Okay, that was my childhood favorite. Sure. Um, what's my third one? Okay, this is a really cheesy one, but it's I don't, it's like this show. I don't even know if it was in the theater. It's called Mrs. Eris Goes to Paris. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, never like, heard that one. And Angela Lansbury is like my childhood, like, <laughs> you know, I loved it. That's just, awesome. I love Angela Lansbury. Anyways, <laughs> those are my three. Very cool. Oh, man. Okay. So mine would have to be The Godfather. Of course. Um, I love all of them, though, so it's hard to pick. And then even three, you even say, like even like three. I do like three. Three is a tough one, but you have to have three though. I mean, like, you have to have a no... trilogy. You can't have a two, though. Yeah, though the, I, don't know. I, I would argue that Godfather one and two is one movie, and sure. and it, it I... and it was good enough to hold. But oh, I enjoy parts of. Three. I don't know. I think three <laughs> is. It has to be there too. I mean, it's not my favorite, but I think uh, you have to have it. Um, okay. And then beaches. That's wow. also oh, I love we that. Just, I know. I like one summer I spent like my sister and I like and watched it like twelve times Aww. and sat and cried. Um so beaches and then the other one has to be clueless. I just I can't <laughs> I know every single word in that movie and can quote it. Every time I watch it, I have to stop and watch it if it's on TV. I'll, I'll so tell you I what. When I was when I was uh, in high school, I was working at a, a video store, and the movie that I rented constantly was Beaches. Like oh, I yeah. would sell it. Not me personally. I would rent it to my my. I, I saw oh. it. I saw it. I teared up. I moved on. But <laughs> but my but I would recommend it constantly to to people who would come in, and people were just bawling. Yeah, and then, and then if okay. I really didn't like them, I put Steel Magnolias right next to it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a, a good, good one, one too. Yeah. And you put both yeah. those movies and just like if you don't cry somewhere, you're dead inside. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Now where yeah, can that where album can, is great too? Oh Beaches god, album. amazing, amazing. Now where can people <laughs> find uh, Athos? Our website mm-hmm. is www.athosinsurance all spelled out dot com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, do do you have social media? So we're working, we're working on, on that. On that. <laughs> it's 2018, guys. It's 2018, guys. It's 2018, guys. 2018. We got to work on that. It's I know. No, we are we are uh, working on that. Actually, um, we just hired on uh, someone to help with that. Yeah. Um, we we have a Facebook page. Okay. Um, I'll put a link of it. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Don't worry. Okay. I'm just yeah, I'm okay. just I'm just busting your balls, guys. Don't worry about it. No, I mean, what, is, what I mean, our, I mean, seriously, goal. like like you know, what kind of Instagram would would an insurance company have like shots of like policies no, like or tough. claims? Right. It's 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 tough. It, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I have I have some ideas I can give you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we're open to it. Yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for dropping all these knowledge bombs on the tribe today. Yeah. It's been educational, and I hope it helps uh, at least one. If it helps one filmmaker in the world, it was worth it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's all sure. we want. We just want to help people ultimately. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good business again. I want to thank Eileen and Kat for being on the show. Thank you for dropping those knowledge bombs about something that we all need in life, insurance. And again, this might not be an episode you're going to listen to right away, but you should definitely bookmark it when you are about to start production, when you're start about to get into pre-production, and revisit this episode just so you kind of put that stuff back in your head. It's really good to understand what you need and what you don't need because a lot of times when you're on a small-budget film – Sometimes uh, the the production manager or, or the producers will start adding all sorts of unneeded uh, insurance on the bill. And if you know a little bit more about what you need and what you don't need, you can speak intelligently about insurance and save yourself a ton of cash. And then, by the way, guys, I, I did use Athos Insurance on, on the Corner of Ego and Desire, and it was seamless. So easy. So just not cumbersome like the olden days of getting insurance did it all online. I had any questions, I called them up and they got on the phone and walked me through things that telling me what I needed, what I didn't need and so on, answering all sorts of questions. So it was really, really great. So definitely check them out, athosinsurance.com. And if you want to get links to anything else we talked about in this episode, just head over to indiefilmhustle.com forward slash 257. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.